What's up? What's up? What's up? Shoot. We're done? All right. Got to go. Shoot. I mean, that was a rough day for him. How rough? I don't know. You play receiver your whole life. You can imagine doing something your whole life. Say you were reporting your whole life, and then one day they say, I don't know, go to construction work. <laughs> we're going to do something else. I mean, he uh, he played receiver his whole life. That's all we all ever played. So you can kind of see it when he's out there. He looks like a receiver. But I knew um, he had the height. And at that time, you got to remember the receivers that they did have. If you remember. Think about it. Everybody is in the NFL right now. You know I'm, I'm not saying my brother couldn't have been in the NFL as a receiver because I believe he could have. But at that time, for that team, in the best interest of that team, he he could have been a corner. You know I'm saying he, Levi was on, on the same team. You could talk to Levi as well. Uh, but I knew it was going to be a good fit for him because he was going to be a big corner, rangy, with great ball skills. So um, it was going to be a lot of carryover for him because good, you know, it's a lot of DBs you see with uh, good feet, you know what I'm saying, can run, they can't catch. So. Knew he had one advantage. And, and, and so, how did you, con how, what did you, did you console him? Did you say, just buck, buck up, buddy? And no, that's not how I am. Sorry, I get it, I get it. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, in that moment, um, I kind of felt for him. You know what I'm saying? I understand, you know, Alabama's a powerhouse school. They kind of like, you don't really get a lot of say so. If he was at a smaller school or somewhere, he probably could have been like, no, I don't want to. I want to play receiver. But uh, knowing that uh, he was going to be in good hands, you know, this is the best, if not the best coach, you know, we've ever had in college football, um, telling you that he wants you to play corners for a good reason. So I kind of just had to, like, put it in the framework of uh, big picture, big picture, you know what I'm saying? Right now you're probably in small picture just because, you know, you, it's always been this one way and you get so comfortable with things being, you know what I'm saying, how they've always been. But uh, it's a challenge, you know what I'm saying? I damn sure I felt like you could do it. I told him he could do it. If anybody could do it, I know it's you. Um, it's going it's going to be hard in the beginning, but I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying? It's still football, and you'll, and you'll adjust just fine. But I'll try to console my brother, but also, you know what I'm saying, as you hold somebody's hand, explain to them why things are the way they are, you know what I'm saying? That's part of, like, teaching, and, you know what I'm saying, part of being a father figure, you know what I'm saying? That was before I even had my kid, I think. Uh, but, you know, I always try to leave my brothers and, you know, be there for them. But, Part of me says, uh, come on, I'm going to hold your hand, and we're going to be all right. But another me is you kick him in the butt and say, get out there. You'll be just fine. What's in the hand? On the pace for 20 picks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buck up, buddy. I love that. <laughs> I, was watch, I was watching the other, the other night. Yeah. You know, it's what you can do on the field. We've talked so much about that. But, mm -hmm. like, I'm often amazed at what you do off the field. I mean, every mm -hmm. time I look down at the sideline when you guys were on offense for the sideline, you're walking mm -hmm. around. Yeah, um, especially my coaches. You know, my coaches always notice that. But I've been doing that since last year. It's just, I feel like, you know, we even had a low in like the third quarter, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like uh, throughout the game, it's such an emotional roller coaster with all the ebbs and flows of the game of, you know, momentum shifts. And this team is up and this team is down. Or they had a big play, we had a big play. So I kind of keep it in the frame where let's keep going as far as like positive energy and the. And the old linemen, I feel like they got one of the hardest jobs on the field with protecting Josh. So I always try to give them some, you know, positive reinforcement, you know, and their job is hard. So I couldn't block people all day. I couldn't push people all day. So I try to always be there be like this. You know, hold them up, fellas. We're going to do our job. You know what I'm saying? We got your back. Uh, we're going to take care of you as much as I can. But I just try to be that positive um, positive force. And it also keeps me in a good right, man, uh, right framework as far as, like, my mind. Because, you know, even out there, like, if something bad happens or I drop a pass or I run the wrong route or – you know, I do a lot of bad things, but I try to keep it as a just, you know, one track mind to keep getting better, keep motivating your guys and do what's in the best interest of your team rather than yourself. Did your family get your back for you? Hell no. Me. No, nah, I didn't really have too many people like that. I've always been that way, though. So more like a self motivator rather than, you know, leaning on other people. I try not to put that burden on other people of, you know, uh, taking care of my energy and keeping me in the right framework. work. So I try to put it all on myself and, you know, I can carry it. I got some big shoulders, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just out there more on the positive. Josh has, has a ton of weapons. Yeah. Um, only so many balls to go around. Hell right? yeah. Right now he's riding that hot hand with Dawson Knox. Hell yeah. Cole Beasley not getting as many targets mm -hmm. as maybe he did a few games 
earlier in the year. How have you seen him kind of mentally just stay, kind of staying plugged in? What have you seen from him? It's, with Josh? No, from Cole. Cole. Yeah, I mean, Cole's been in the league for a long time. You know, even – like we even with last year, like yeah, we were throwing the ball. We had drives where we throw the ball 15 times in a row. You know, it's not all, it's not like that now. You know, as far as like adjusting, we got to do what we got to do to win. You know what I'm saying, and I feel like uh, Cole's one of the older guys in the room that understands that. Of course, everybody wants more shit. Everybody wants the ball. You know, you ask a receiver, what do you want? I want the ball. You know what I'm saying, and then you got so many weapons. Like we got running backs that can carry, like that, that can catch the ball out of the backfield, that can do X, Y, Z. So you know, just like me and and all the other guys, we'd be like. Time is everything. Uh, just like me and all the other guys, I always say, look, we can only control what we can control at this point. You know what I'm saying? As a receiver, you know, I know you want the ball, but sometimes we're going to have to throw a block out there. We're going to have to do X, Y, Z. And I look at it as, and, you know, I've been in the offenses where as though you, some games you get five targets, some games you get ten, some games you get three. But it's what you make with the targets. You got to uh, take advantage. And if you're not taking advantage, you only can look at yourself. So for me, I just say everybody keep that in the frame. Keep that in the forefront of your mind, just being like everybody do their job because we got to do what we got to do to win. And at the end of the day, as long as we winning, not too many complaints. Dawson got five touchdowns. You tell him. I told him to calm down. I told him, listen, <laughs> give me one or two. So we, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just messing. Does, but Does he owe you something? Because, I mean, you've essentially been department play for decoy on his past. Tell, tell me about it. I'm telling you. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, how, 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 how much do you relish that role? Yeah. Despite the fact you're not making the catch, I mean, yeah. everybody's focused on you, and all of a sudden Dawson's like. I make up. I make fun of him all the time, and I talk a lot of junk to our tight ends. I'm like, this look, if I'm gonna be out there getting you open, like I'm gonna need some of that check, or like I'm gonna touch him. But I just be joking, uh, like, cause I tell him like, listen, if I can help you get open, you know what I'm saying it ain't gonna do nothing but turn the corner for me at one point where though you gonna help me get open, and I scratch it back, you scratch mine. But I'm super happy for Knox as far as like seeing his potential, like seeing him really relative to being a big target. You know what I'm saying catching those 50 50 balls and just. You know, making those plays that we all knew that he could make. I've only been with him for his second year, so Knox's been a baller for them for all I know. But um, I'm just happy to see him having success and hopefully he can sc keep scoring touchdowns. I say, listen, I'm going to walk you eventually. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go get me some touchdowns. yourself the most talented decoy in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, I got to be. I got to be. <laughs> buck up, buddy. Buck up, buddy. That's all I, I got to tell myself in my ear, buck up, buddy. We'll be all right. We never know that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, he goes in that hostile environment you guys all talked about last week. Yeah. He just shines. I mean, what, did, what did he do so well on Sunday night? You see, he was being himself. To me, he was being himself. Uh, he trusted himself. In those big moments, he wanted the team He wanted the team to be on his back as the quarterback, as our leader. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that you got to – you kind of lose a little bit from if you didn't watch the game. If you didn't see the game, you didn't see how the game was going because we were really in a low and we needed that drive really bad. Because, like, you know, Kansas City can score fast. They can do a lot of things on offense. So um, we needed that drive. We needed a first down. We needed another first down. So um, him jumping over a guy or igniting our team shows you that we have, like I say, a lot of weapons, a lot of guys that can do it. But when it comes from your quarterback position, it gives everybody a little bit more juice and makes it a little bit more motivated to be like, all right, well, shit. You know, our quarterback is out there doing everything, running, jumping, sliding. We can do a little bit more. So. In terms of turning the page from Kansas City now, yeah. like how much We got our SB. We got our SB. SB? SB. SB, yeah. SB. We got our SB. Does that stick in your mind as you have that? Nah, it doesn't stick in our mind at all. For me, I mean, listen, like, if you look back at last year and say how we lost, like, we can find a million reasons as to why we lost. You know, Oh, we played on a Tuesday. Oh, this, oh, that. Like, you can come up with as many excuses as you want, but right now they, they play better than us on that Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Right now, uh, Moving on from last week, just trying to go in with the right mindset. This this game, as far as like they got a good team, they got good DBs. Uh, they're a well coached team all around. You know, they got one of the best coaches in the league, and we just got going with the right right mindset. You know, I feel like we had a lot of distractions last year. You know, what I'm saying let the, let that be a reminder to you that you were distracted last year, and we came out and didn't had a, had a couple of miscues, had a couple of things that didn't come our way. So. Uh, more focus on the right now rather than last year because, you know, there's a lot of so much stuff like COVID. I can give you a million excuses now. I got a couple for you, but I'm not a big excuse guy. I just be like, they outplayed us. They played a better game. Um, we just trying to execute at a high level and come out and play in this one. You talk about staying focused, blocking out the distractions and stuff like that. Yeah. You guys are human. Power rankings have you guys as number one 
That shit, that shit's cap. Listen, my fault. I'm just saying. Listen, my bad. A lot of curse words today. Yeah. I don't listen to the radio. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm kidding. <laughs> what is, how do you guys continue to yeah. stay hungry when, hey, well, you're number one in the power rankings. Oh, wow. Like, what do you do? We got, we got some coaches. Like, Coach McDermott is a – I mean, y'all have spoken to him. Y'all can imagine what he's like. Y'all seen how he coaches. He's not a big rider, a high horse, or drink the Kool-Aid guy. So, uh, his first thing when he comes in the morning is stay humble and stay hungry. Like, um, we don't want to hear nothing about it last week. We have a little 24 hour rule of, you know what I'm saying, win or lose, and then you move on from it. But he stays in a constant like mindset of just, we need to get better. We're not there yet. And then you got Coach Dayboff. First thing, first thing you say when you see this is, yeah, yeah, we do some good things, but we do a lot of things really bad or not as good. So uh, we got to get back to work or like just keep it in that grind mindset. But I tell you that powering and stuff, like, look, man, I remember the first game of the season, we were. Probably with 32 or something like that. So I try not to get Coach too caught up in that. Like, we're going to see where it is after like 17. So, yeah. But I try not to get. I, my mom even talks to me about it. But I'm like, it's a long season. See me at the end. Those Cowboys. My brother said he wants to battle for the confetti. I said, look, if anybody got the recipe on you, I got the recipe. We got this little thing called the little brother syndrome. And we play video games, he like always loses at the end of the game and stuff like that. So I say, I say, you think you could beat me? He said, uh, he said, little brother syndrome don't apply here. I said, I said, I guess time will tell. Why does it take till the end of the game for everybody? Well, in video games, because lack of focus. You know, after a while you'll be locked in, you're locked in, I'm gonna beat him, I'm gonna beat him, I'm gonna beat him. And then at the end of the game, I finish things off. How do you, how do you stay focused and ready to maximize every opportunity, even if it's plentiful or limited. Yeah. How, how do you do that? I assume you're, you're almost battling yourself to mm -hmm. go full every time. It's, it's hard, but, like, I mean, that's just come with the job. Like, every year, that's why I say, like, when people ask me, every year is going to be different. Like, I'm, am I ever concerned? No, just, like, as far as, like, who you are and the player that you are isn't going to always, like, I told somebody else, like, you can run 100 sprints. That doesn't mean you're going to get 100 targets a game. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to play you different. Different teams have different schemes, different – well, different schematics and different like different ways they want to do things. So it's all predicated on a week. But I'm lucky to be on a team that has talented guys. I'm saying I'm lucky to be on a team that, you know, what I'm saying like uh, it's not always on me. I'm saying I can just do, I can do my job and feel confident in doing my job. So when your opportunities come, like like in the past, like I was on teams, you know, I've been on a team where though you're not getting as many targets, or you're getting this, or you're getting that. So I just try to hone in on my like farming my own land. Like just just take care of your land. You know what I'm saying, and it'll. It'll turn the corner for you and your team, but that's all. Do other guys, guys. ask you how to approach that situation? I yeah. Mean, Gabe last year was more involved. He's not as involved, and he's a younger yeah. player. It's like, uh, like even not even guys on my team, like guys on other teams will ask me like stuff like, you know what I'm saying, I'm frustrated here, like, or like, you know what I'm saying, what do I do here? And I'm, I tell them the same thing I tell myself, like uh, controlling what you can control, you know what I'm saying, because there's no – all the off, all the works you put in in the off season, like all that shit, you nobody cares about that. You know what I'm saying? You did that for you. you know saying you didn't do that for nobody else. You did that for to be prepared for the opportunity, whether it comes or it doesn't come, or it comes plenty for it, it comes a little bit. So, for me, I just say just focus on the task at hand. Like, um, if you got a rep to win, win the rep. You know what I'm saying like, if you lose, you can't really argue with nobody because you know what I'm saying you're thinking about all the reps you're not good. So for me, like a guy like Gabe, like I told him like Gabe. I'm saying you're a long, you're a young player. I'm saying you gonna have you gonna have a long career. And right now, I know you want to, I know you want more targets. Then you gotta look at bees. I know you, I know bees want one more targets. You know what I'm saying I know E one more targets. I don't want the running backs one more target. You know what I'm saying shit. I, maybe I want the ball. I'm just kidding, but I mean everybody wants the ball. It's only one to go around. You know I'm saying all we can do is control. We control. Like Gabe went in on the, late in the game, and you can trust him. Like you know what I'm saying he made a big he made a big play. I don't know if that was third down or second down, but. Guys go in the game and they can make plays and you can trust them to be out there. It's just going to be about, you know what I'm saying, like uh, trusting that we have depth and when it's time to come, we're going to all spin. Now have a good one.